let's talk about using external MIDI input within Sensory Percussion. And I'm referring to this external automation tab and controllers, MIDI input, and the different things you can do with this. If you've dug way back in this tutorial series, we have talked about this before, but a lot has changed since then, and I've had a lot of experiences that have changed the way I think about this, so I thought it would be helpful to revisit it with some updates. So I'm going to talk about using MIDI from Ableton to control things within sensory percussion. If you know me, I usually go the other way, and that means I send MIDI from sensory percussion note messages and CCs and stuff out into Ableton to control things. And this really just comes down to your preference and workflow. I'm very comfortable with Ableton, so I tend to do most things there. But Sensory Percussion offers a really sweet workflow. This sampler is incredible. It's very, very much purpose built for use with Sensory Percussion. So in a lot of cases, it's going to be a lot easier to just use this sampler. If you want to bring in external control, whether that be sequences, like we're going to talk about here in a minute, or just a MIDI controller to control things manually, this is a very powerful move and a very valid workflow. So, like I said, we're going to be using Ableton in this tutorial to control things within Sensory. You can use any DAW to do this, but the benefit of doing it with Ableton is that now that we have Sensory Percussion as a plugin, you can simply just have MIDI tracks that output directly into the plugin, so you don't have to mess with a virtual MIDI port or anything like that. I've said this a bunch, but I'm a huge fan of offloading some of the not-so-musical modulation signal management to my computer. You can totally be a purist and use Sensory Percussion's powerful controllers to manage every single change and modulation from your drums, and there's nothing wrong with that except that it's really hard. To me, these controllers are meant for expressivity, and using them to do mundane things such as turning samplers on and off feels like a bit of a waste of creative energy to me. So why not use your computer to do that boring stuff so we can focus on the expressivity, which is what makes music worth playing and listening to anyway. Before we hop into these examples, really quickly, I just wanted to outline how you would set up an external controller of some kind. So let's just create a new one from scratch. Um, I would just create MIDI input controller and there's two different event types that we can use notes and control changes. Uh, let's do control change because that's very easy to follow and in Ableton again you can do this in any DAW or with just a MIDI controller or something. I'm just going to create a blank clip and in this clip I'm just going to draw a CC, something random, put in some kind of modulation shape, and then the important thing is to send this MIDI output into the sensory percussion plugin. So that will show up as whatever you named the track that your sensory percussion plugin is on. So I just put some asterisks on it just for fun. And I do believe you have to specify a channel in the second chooser. So we'll do something random again. 9, channel 9. So now I could use the learn mode, which is nice and easy, but it does require that you are able to isolate the MIDI event. So in this case, I would want to make sure that I stop um, all of the other clips because these all have MIDI as well. And then when I play this one MIDI clip, it picks it up immediately. So now when I exit learn mode, you can see that modulation that I drew here is being reflected in this controller. And then from there, it's just a matter of assigning it to what parameter you want to control within sensory. So I have a pretty bare bones setup here right now. I have this fairly long piano sample, uh, which is nice to listen to. And I have it in a choke group with the rim. I said before that I'm a bit of an Ableton junkie, so I use, I tend to just send MIDI from Sensory into Ableton for most things, but I have been circling back to using the built-in sampler and Sensory more and more. There are some really cool features in here that are very hard to recreate in Ableton. For instance, with Tail enabled, we can have multiple instances of this sample 
playing in different places in the stereo field depending on where pan was set when we triggered that note. So I'm using center to edge to control pan. So if I play towards the edge, it's going to be more to the right. And if I play to the center, it's going to be on the left. So I find in my lessons that people are usually very interested in creating their own setups, but they kind of get stuck at this point where we've created an interesting vibe, like with these samples that are melodic and then these in a choke group for them to interact with. And then you can sort of play a beat with it. But where do you go from there? There's a lot of things that you could do, but one of my go-to's to get beyond just a vibe and start making more of a composition is to bring some sequencing in. With this example, something that sticks out to me is that we have this really long sample and there's some interesting stuff to use over here that we're not using at all. So it would be pretty easy to just adjust the start time and then now this sample is completely different than what it was before. So what I did is I created an external MIDI input using CC1 and I just mapped it to the sample start time. So we got four bars at the beginning which is what we were hearing before and we can let that play on and then watch this clip move the start time to something completely different for the bars five through eight. But just playing through at that time, something I think would we could benefit from, since these samples are really long and they all are going to overlap each other, is to utilize the stop button. We can actually sequence that to be a part of this composition to give us some more space. And that's what's going on on the second controller here. This is a note message, which is just uh, C3, I think. And this is a super simple clip with just a bunch of C3 notes. And if I run that as well, you can see that it will hit this stop button. I'm not clicking it, it's just the MIDI doing its job. And we have that moving the start time happening at the same time. Pretty slick. When we go to the B section, it chokes automatically. Pretty nice. I would I would generally recommend using a note for a button control rather than a CC because you don't want to. I mean, you could totally use a CC, but you don't want to have to draw that. That's going to be really annoying. Just use a note. It's like a binary on-off thing. It's going to be great. Quick tip: if you are not able to use the learn mode because it's hard to isolate the MIDI event, which totally happens and you're not super up on your MIDI note numbers, which I can't blame you because that's really abstract to think about. A really easy workaround is to, instead of using C3 or something in like a quote unquote normal range, just start at the very bottom because C negative two is note zero. C sharp negative two would be note one. That's pretty easy to remember. Taking this up another level, I'm using a, another CC, CC2, to modulate the pitch of this sample to create some more, another layer of interest. So it starts out at zero, as expected, and then for this B section it changes the pitch. So translating CCs which go from 0 to 127 into semitones is not very straightforward at all. So my suggestion for making that easier on yourself is to simply just restrict the range of pitches. So I knew I wanted to transpose this up a fifth, which is plus 7, so I just went ahead and restricted that range because the default is like uh, 8 octaves, and that's going to be a giant headache to try to drill down to like what CC number is plus 7. So in this case, Super easy to just go minimum to maximum, and I know that the maximum is plus seven and the minimum would be zero. Another nice thing about keeping this range fairly small is that we can make some small tweaks, like maybe I just want the pitch to warble a tiny bit. And now, 
Rise. This range is musically use usable to create some very small inflections. So in this kit on drum three, I have this pretty out of tune. I have this pretty out of tune chord on the rim. And I just wanted to showcase a, another way to utilize CCs to transpose pitch that has a completely different vibe. And that is when you have quantized pitch enabled, this unlocks a really special feature to the sensory percussion sampler that I've actually gone to great lengths to try to recreate in other places, but it's just not worth it. Just use the sensory percussion sampler. It's awesome for this. So again, I have this CC clip, let's see, CC3, and this is creating some transposition to this sample within a pretty small range again. So you can see this envelope controlling the pitch of the sample. And check out what happens with these quick modulations. We're like glissing through the scale. Which is super cool. I have this other sampler on the rim that's just uh, random different samples, percussive vibe. And so what if I wanted to take use the rim but only have these chords come in sometimes because that's a pretty strong vibe uh, and not necessarily in the best way so you could modulate the volume but that's going to create some weird unnatural feeling things like if I triggered if I played this sample my automation happens to bring the volume down right after you just hear it fade out which doesn't feel good to me it feels very artificial so what I would propose using is this stop button. This, I call it the stop receiving triggers button. I don't know its real name, but basically it just deactivates the sampler in a different way than this. This will just turn it off immediately. It cuts off all sound. This stops it from receiving triggers, which means that the, if a, a sample is currently active, we can hear it play out. And then now we don't hear it. Contrast that with turning the power icon off. Not a good vibe. Good vibe. Not a great vibe, but not as bad as this bad vibe. Of course, these have their uses as well. So I created this clip, just sort of like a, I called it the on off toggle. And what I did is I drew this with the intent that while the MIDI notes are on, the sampler can receive triggers, and then when it's off, it can't. And let's just recreate this really fast. So create a new MIDI controller, and I know that's C sharp three. So I'm not gonna use learn mode because I wanna keep all these other clips running. So I know that's channel one, and C sharp, C three is 60, so C sharp three would be 61. Check out what happens. When I map this to the stop button and run the clip, what's happening is that every time it receives the MIDI node, it toggles this button, which is not what I wanted. Again, what I wanted was for this to be on while MIDI notes are on and then off when the MIDI notes are off. So when you map to a button, you get these extra controls, pivot and type. The default type is toggle, which is whenever it receives a note message, it toggles the state of this button. What we want is momentary, which means that while it's on, it's on. When it's off, it's off. Perfect. just created five different elements to control this one eight bar loop thing. You can see how this could quickly become a pretty unmanageable session just by sheer track count. I created all of these separately and I often like to do that just so I can very easily 
access what's going on. I'm like, oh, I want to change this pitch envelope. I know it's on this track that I named piano sample pitch. And then I can make tweaks here, boom, super easy. But you totally can put all of these control signals in the same clip. The only caveat is that they have to be mapped in the same MIDI channel. And in most cases, you're going to be fine just putting all of the control signals fr from external MIDI on the same MIDI channel. So I could pretty easily combine these just by copying and pasting stuff. So this is, we'll just put it all in this clip. So this is CC1, and I want to bring in these notes. So all I would have to do is just select all, copy it, go back to this one, back to this clip, and paste them in. And now those MIDI notes are there, so I could deactivate that. This clip has an envelope, so I could just copy that envelope and come over to this clip that I'm putting everything in. And I think I do need to select the right CC number, CC2, which there's no envelope for, which makes sense, and then just paste it in. And now CC2 has a, an envelope. And then I could go through and do the same thing for this CC and these notes. Copy them in, and then everything could just be in this one clip. And don't worry if your modulation signals are in clips that are different lengths. You could just go into that envelope and unlink it to make it a different length. That's not going to work for different note messages. You can work around it. It'll be okay. So now we got this 8-bar loop with a super bare-bones sensory percussion setup. You know, just a few samplers, just a few drums, just one kit. And it's already in a pretty dynamic place using the external MIDI input. If you grab these files, I challenge you to hone this in to get it where you want it so these sequences and all the settings match your playing style and your vision. Try taking it even further by creating a whole other section with different modulation or sequencing or bringing in a different kit. The sky is the limit.